I'm speaking a little bit today about my day with for the day. In Afrikaans, uh, ooh, hallelujah. In Afrikaans, my day with was vergeven, vergeet, verlos, verander, verboe. Now to try and translate that, I tried my best. Okay, so let's go with that one. I believe there's key words that we have for this season. I give it to you and I'm praying. Please guys, write it down. Go and work through it and see what God is saying to you. In this time, this season. Amen. The first word will be forgive. And I say, if I cannot forgive, I choose to harden my heart. It's either I will forgive or I will harden my heart. And first of all is to forgive myself. Not just, God forgive me, but also to forgive myself. Mm. When I need to forgive, if I must forgive you, I must be able to forgive myself. Because if I cannot forgive myself, I cannot forgive you. Mm. It's impossible. It's impossible. If I'm hard on myself, I'm going to be hard on you. Mm. That's the way it is. Yeah. Is it not the Bible says, I must love you with the love that I have for myself. The greatest commandment, eh? Love the Lord your God with everything, everything, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm. As you have grace on yourself, so you have the capacity to have grace on others. If I cannot forgive myself, I cannot forgive others. Mm. If I have issues with myself, I will have issues with others. That's the way it is. And many times we have issues with people because there's a lot of issues inside. And then when I see them, let's try not to fix the people first, fix the relationship first. But ask God, God, why is these frustrations with people? And I must just go alone. You know, I must just get one side. Yes, that's, it must happen also. Sometimes when you must just be alone, you and God and you with yourself, it's necessary. But so many times, when I see issues with people, it's a reflection of things that's happening inside of me. Mm. And it's by God, God's grace that I am free. This, this issue rising up in me when I was under. But meanwhile, God is showing me something about myself. Mm. And it's not so much about Leander that I want to kill the guy. Mm. But <clears throat> God is actually showing me, Cornelius, you need to kill that thing inside of you. It has nothing to do with Leander. Yeah. But God used Leander in that way that I don't want God to use that man in that way in my life. Mm-hmm. He's stirring some things that I don't want to be stirred in that way. Hello? Yeah. So may God give you the grace to understand how to forgive yourself for things that went wrong in the past. Mm-hmm. Hello? Because if I cannot forgive myself, about things in the past that I will struggle to forgive on others. Yeah. Is it not? You can write down Luke 23, verse 34. Father, forgive them. And if I have the attitude of Christ, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. So Jesus looked at us and he said, Father, forgive them for so many things that we don't know what we There's sometimes we are sinning because of some stupidity in our lives. Because to sin and to go into wrong attitudes and it's going to hurt ourselves. It's just going to destroy our own lives. We don't know what we are doing. We don't know what we are doing when we entertain those sins, those attitudes or those things or negativity. We don't know how it's going to destroy ourselves. God forgive that man. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's doing. May God give us understanding. Amen? Amen. Give us understanding. Now we see in Matthew 6, 12, 14, and 15. Father, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. So now it's not just that I can forgive you according to the capacity that I have to forgive myself. This is saying, Lord, Forgive me in the way that I forgive Monique. Forgive me in the way that I forgive John Lee. 
God forgives me in the way that I forgive the pastor. <laughs> That's what you ask. That's what it says. How you must pray. Jesus said, this is the way you should pray. You must ask for forgiveness that God will forgive you in the way that you forgive others. How must the forgiveness from heaven flow into your life if you cannot let it flow to others? So in that sense, I say, may we be arrested. You say, God, how are you forgiving me that way I need to forgive her? The forgiveness from heaven must flow. Then I, if the blood is speaking into my life of forgiveness, I must allow the blood to speak there, fast to you. Amen. And the enemy will set you up so that you, your forgiveness from heaven to you and you to heaven, that it will be, it's not an open channel. He will set you up with people. And then it's not the people's fault. It's not the people's fault. But if you cannot forgive them, the issue is going to be here with yourself and you cannot receive his forgiveness. Yeah. Then something goes wrong and you feel rejected and you feel you're not good enough and you know this is not right and going into self-pity or depression or negativity about the stuff again because I entertain this dynamic where I am the engine has ceased. Hello. Well, that was the sound when we ceased the first Yari out of his car. It was wonderful. First time that we borrowed the car from the outreach, five full time guys, guys, me, young father Yenin, and three others, we go to Radar uh, store on the way back. Somebody cannot watch the oil light. <laughs> and it was the son of that father. It was the father's car. So, mm, wonderful. I remember they, that place. I forget about that. The outside of Houston. That our first outreach in Kriari cost us a lot of money. <laughs> oh, okay, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> But bottom line, forgive. To forgive. My brother, my sister, get into God's grace. Respect the blood. Respect the blood of Christ by forgiving yourself. But then also to let it flow to others. If you respect the blood, you forgive that man. You forgive him because Christ is perfect. Because Christ said, the one who is perfect, who will never leave you, never forsake you, he commanded you to forgive. How can you not then forgive your brother if he is master and lord? Unless what that person has done to you is your master and your lord. Make the issue your master and your lord, your guide, your shepherd. Be intimate with that and you see what destruction and rubbish will be there. Because it's forgive, I will forgive or I will harden my heart. Now you can write there. Hebrews 3 verse 15. When the Holy Spirit will speak, don't harden your hearts. When the Holy Spirit speak, don't harden your hearts. So many times it is said in the word of God. When the Holy Spirit speak, don't harden your hearts. Like in the days with Israel. Like in those days. Like with those guys. Like with those guys. When God speaks to you, you have opportunity to harden your heart or not. That's where religion comes in very effectively. So the enemy must organize action that you have opportunity so that he can make sure you heart, you're harden your heart against the gospel. Are you with me? How can I harden my heart against something if that something is not coming my way. If you're not speaking to me, how can I harden my heart against what you are saying? I cannot. I'm not hardening my heart against the president of Ghana. I don't 
don't know who is, I don't know exactly the economy somewhere there next to Nigeria. I don't know who those guys are. Of course, I don't know, but if the opportunity is there and he is going to speak to me, I have an opportunity to do something with my heart, to get my heart in a very bad state. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that is the opportunity that the devil has to make sure you have a hardened heart. Because you make decisions against the Spirit. You with me? So it's dangerous when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Because something's going to happen. You're going to open up and God's going to do a thing. Or you're going to harden your heart. That is T-junction. When God speaks, it's T-junction. It's not just status quo. It's not just going further. You will go out here and every time that you hear the word, you will learn how to be more blasé with the word. Or just, I've heard another thing. But you will not say, uh -huh. that is what will happen inside you. I've heard it before. And you will choose. I've heard this before and it didn't work. You've hardened your heart. Or, I tell you, Holy Spirit, speak to me more. If you like the sermon or not, when you hear the word, when you hear the, the song, you need to hear, Holy Spirit, what I'm saying to you. I told you how I, uh, when my uh, brother was busy studying, becoming a doper duomini, uh, a reformed uh, reverend. And I was at the Dopper, in the Dopper, Gereformeerde Kerk, at the service again, and I was just in that charismatic movement, and man, now it's just, yeah, you just go with this thing. And we were singing, you know, praise the year, met. And I thought, oh, Lord, what now? You know, and I was like moaning, speaking to the Lord, and God said, Oh boy, now you open up <laughs> or not. God said, look, the, look at that lady. Are you saying to me that there's nothing in her worshipping me? <laughs> and I look at the couple and it's like I feel, what if that couple is in marriage, a marriage situation and they are actually calling out to God? in their simplistic way. And after about the third or the fourth situation, I just started, oh, sorry, Lord. Sorry, come on. And the words came, who is worshipping the most? And I had to confess that I'm the Pharisee standing here to judge the others, saying that I'm worshipping and they're not worshipping. <clears throat> With some arrogant religious demon next to me, agreeing with that rubbish about what I think, how they doing it, and I know how I do it. Oh man, if you allow the Spirit, He's going to catch you in ways that you don't realize in some places uh, where you need to decide, I will go with this or I will not go with this. But at that moment, I can be so full of, I'm right, they are wrong. You know? They will sing the song about I lift my hands, but they don't lift their hands, you know. And I can be right, they can be wrong. But at that moment, the one who is blocking the spirit the most is me. You with me? So when we hear the word, when we are busy with God, be careful how you deal with the living God. Be careful, have respect. Let the fear of God be on you. Because you're going to go, well, how do they say, better or bitter, hey? Eh? One of the two. It's the junction. When God is busy with you, when the Holy Spirit is there, then the devil is there because he sees opportunity. He sees opportunity for you to harden your heart. When we open the word here, the devil is there for you. You say, if this man will reject the word, and not, I reject the word, but just let the word again go through it. Yes, we have more authority. Because the devil cannot just have authority over you, unless you give it to him. 
How do you give it to him? You don't sit here and say, Devil, I give you more authority over my life. No, in Jesus' name, you don't do that. But by not allowing the authority of God, I give him the room for his authority to work in me. Not true? So when you hear the word even tonight, this afternoon, this evening, when you hear the word, the word, you can decide. I take it, but if you don't take it, then the enemy knows. I have more place. Because this man learned, he's learning how to just wara wara when the word is opened up. Or when he hears the word, he's learning how to wara wara with the word. And as long as we get him more and more to wara wara, we can um, get him more serious about temptation and rubbish. But he cannot get you to become more serious about temptation and self-pity and self-things and self-justification. He cannot have that authority unless you gave up the authority that you have in the word. But if you see this is precious... I take this, this is mine, this, this is the words of life. If I, if I feel it, I will still have it. If I believe it or not, how do they say, we say? You speak it till you believe it. And then you speak it because you believe it. So if you not feel you're not, but I'm not accurate in this word. and I don't, don't sit in condemnation. You just get it in. You just read it. Even if it's not exploding you at in, uh, in you at that moment, so what? No, but it doesn't work for me. Amen, says all the devils in hell for you. No. <laughs> Who says? Who said it doesn't work for you? How did you determine that? Did God say it to you? <laughs> the word will not work for you. <laughs> you just you just take it. You just take it. Say this is for me. If you feel it or not, it's your soul, no, can have issues. Your spirit, hunger. There's a hunger in your spirit for more of the word. And the more you fill your spirit with the word, the more your soul needs to turn. If it's turning with a tantrum or not, he will turn. Because your spirit is becoming stronger without realizing it that you are feeding your spirit. That your spirit is growing stronger. You don't feel your spirit is growing, growing stronger. But the more you put the word there, the real you, that makes it you're not a freakazoid baboon. That you're not some other baboon. That you are being fed with the word. The words of life. The words of life that give you the word from your spirit to worship him and to serve him and to communicate with him and to have intimacy with him. Amen? Amen. Can we go with that, man? Okay. Hallelujah. Forgive. Otherwise, I just sit in the place of to harden my heart against what God wants to do. About forgiveness as the first point is all about the cross. The word of the cross the word of the cross and that what he has done for us is the power of God in my life. Okay, number two, forget. To forgive and forget. To forget is the, is the more challenging part. I forgave you, but I, I cannot forget. I cannot forget what you've done, what you've done to me. So I can forget you. So I can forgive you, but I will never trust you again. Yeah. Now how can God say in the new covenant that he's making with us. I forgive you and I will forget. God doesn't have a problem with his memory. Hello. <laughs> but he makes a certain decision that I will put this aside. The fact of what you have done uh, doesn't have this effect on my memory unless I allow it to have a certain effect. God says, I will not let the memory of your past have a negative effect on me as your father. Hello. Through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of my son. This is how it will be. And so my brother, for me and you, we need to ask God to teach us that. Because it will not come easy. New Covenant, Hebrews 8, verse 10 to 12. This is a covenant that I will 
have with you. I will write my laws, my laws, in your hearts and in your mind. You can read that in Hebrews 8, verse 10 to 12. I will write my laws, God's thoughts, God's ideas. You will write in your heart and in your mind. Hello? And then, and your sins I will forgive and I will remember nothing anymore. Now, just, just, just see that again. My ideas in your heart, my ideas in your mind. In my heart, I have forgiven you. There's nothing against you. In my mind, there's nothing negative against you. As my laws are working in your heart and in your mind, so it is working in my heart and in my mind. And we are covenanted in our minds. We are covenanted in our hearts. And this blood covenant, it is heart to heart. It is mind to mind. Amen. May, may God help us to see this. And this covenant is secure through Jesus Christ. Amen. So therefore, I have the capacity to forget. Why? Practically, new thoughts. We can go with new thoughts. Romans 12, verse 2. Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8, talking about what type of thoughts must I think. Verse 6, first, be anxious of nothing, but let everything that you desire be put before God in prayer, in supplication, with thanksgiving, and the peace of God, oh, there we go again. The peace of God will guard, protect, arrest your heart and your mind. So, be these haha thoughts and these, this heart that can have issues. If I come in prayer and I put it down before the Lord, my life, God promises he will come and his hand of peace, the authority of peace will take my mind and take my heart. There's still a lot of happening there inside, but he's putting this thing, his hand over my mind, his hand over my heart. And saying, okay, let's work with his heart. Let's work with his mind. So brethren, what now? Oh, let's quickly read that. Is it okay with you? Mark it in your Bible. Philippians 4. Come on, Irini. Philippians 4. It's just after 3. 4 verse 8. So, finally, brothers, now what now? Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, Lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent of or praiseworthy, think about such things. So if God says, I take your mind, I take your heart, I keep it safe. There's things inside there that's not nice yet. But he says, now, that mind, think upon these things. Don't think upon other things. Think the thoughts that I have. Have the heart that I have. Hello? And the God of peace will be with you. Not just the peace of God, but the God of peace will be with you. That's verse eleven, uh, 9. May God help you. May God help me. In Jesus' name. Forget. I need to forget. Otherwise, if I don't forgive... I harden my heart it's automatically. If I don't forget, I poison. I put the poison in my life. I'm full of poison. You can see somebody walking with bitterness or with issues. After they gave their lives to Christ, you know, this is face, their eyes, bright shining and face and the lightness in the voice and everything. And then they start to have issues with people. And it's getting all muffy, muffy, muddy, whatever we want to call it. Are you with me? And you can see it later on the face. You can see on the face that poison is working. Poison is working. But, but, but it's not the other person that you have the issue with. It's not him that's giving you the poison. It's you yourself. 
Because this is the way I see it, Patrick. Because he did this, 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 this. This is a type of person, says the judge. And I judge, I will be judged. I will become ten times worse. I will open up the door for the enemy. You can judge me because I judge him. The way that God said, I'm not allowed to judge him. But the accuser of the brethren, that's Satan himself. So that's the only type of judge you can be. You can sit with the accuser of the brothers. But in that place, you become never. You come into a place where poison is working in you. You are just destroying yourself. You are just destroying yourself. You need to be protected by the blood. The blood of Christ protects us. Amen. But there's no protection by the blood of Christ if I cannot forgive and forget. It's not just clickety-click and the blood is over my life and painted and everything is fine. It's about forgive and forget. My heart is safe. I'm safe under the blood. Are you with me? God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Amen. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, last one about the poison. How will I get the poison out? How will I forget the rubbish that that guy has done? Yeah, living stones, God's chosen people, kingdom of priests. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And when you are so busy with his marvelous light, you forget the darkness. If he, there must be no night for the next two years, and you are so excited about the light and, and doing everything 24-7 in the light, but you have energy because the light is giving you the energy, and you are full out in the street, you forget what is happening in darkness. How does darkness look again? Are you with me? Poison cannot work in you anymore. You can forget. You can forget. Like I said this morning, at one stage in my life, when I worked at a psychiatric ward, I worked there. <laughs> and uh, why are you laughing? I wanted to become a psychiatrist at that stage. First year medical school, worked here at Orange Hospital. And, and at that stage, no, no, no Bible, no nothing, nothing, no church, nothing. But every second, third, fourth word is a swear word. No sentence without a swear word. And long story short, a lady friend took me to a church. Mm, okay, no place, front row. Okay, no. God, I need you. I'm, I'm rubbish on my way to hell. Afterwards, after call, went out to the hall. I'm the only one. <laughs> Walked, turned around, praise the Lord and around again, gave my life to Christ, and then for like a week or so, I would testify that I will use the swear words with excitement in my testimony. You know, it's so nice to, to serve the Lord. You must leave your burn, burn, burn. And, and, and after a week, this one lady came to me. She said, what do you think God thinks about your testimony when you speak like that? So uh, that was the end of the swear words in my life. And, uh, and God helped me in that sense. Because then when you push with what you have and you're excited about what you have, there's not tomorrow that temptation to swear. It's, not, it's, it's gone. You fall. There's forgiveness, but you forget. No, I don't say today. You know, I can just forget how to swear. I mean, I got married, you know. So, <laughs> no, what I'm saying is we can overcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is helping us. Number three, freedom. I forgive, I forget, but I will have freedom. Freedom. Because I'm saved in his name. Everybody call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. 
freedom is there. But it's not just, I call on the name of Jesus, Jesus, and everything is just fine. But there's freedom. I can be saved in his name, or I can be a slave in my sin. You can write there, slave in my sin. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Must I quickly get me the man with the, with the two chairs? Quickly do that for me. Two people. One, two, three. Anybody else that can help him? Take up your sin and your, and your, yeah, you can take it up. It says, Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great of wit cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Everything that hinders. The last of what upon us is. Let us every last of in the sun that is so easy to run. And the sin that so easily entangles us. Why? And let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. Now, this is not the easy one, but, but all around the, the yokes and the sin that entangles us. Hello? And now we must run the race. But all with all this rubbish on us and around us, we must run the race. And we try to run the race with endurance, our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. But we sit with all these horrors. So if there's a great cloud of witnesses, I don't have to be such a slave of sin, a slave with all the yokes. Okay, so you can free the man in Jesus' name. So he says, you need to take it off. Okay, now there's him under the guidance of the Spirit. And you let it go. How can he, how will you be able to do that? How can God tell you that you must take off the yokes and you must get rid of the sin that so easily entangles you. How must you do it? He says, Therefore, since we are, are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off. If you understand the witnesses that you have, if you understand the witnesses, if you can draw from the witnesses of people's lives what God has done in their life, if you can be encouraged by what God has done in somebody else, if you can be encouraged with with what was positive in your past, that you can remember how God gave you breakthroughs, how I fell in that rubbish. No, 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 no. God has forgiven me how I stood up again and trusted him again. And I took my forgiveness. And I remember how God said how precious I am. Can you just remember the things that you've done wrong? Or can you remember those precious moments with God? Go and write it down. If I must ask you quickly now, give me the five things, that, the worst decisions in your life, things that happened. I, you will be quick to remember it. Chuck, 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 chuck. I tell you, give me the five to ten best things that you and God experienced. Sometimes it will take a little bit longer. Why? Because we are focusing in the wrong way. I become a slave of my past, slave of my flesh, slave of sin and what others did wrong to me instead of what did they do in the name of the Lord? What was the intention? My dad did that and that and that or my mom did that. But what was the intention? They loved me. How can I destroy my son? They loved you, actually, you know. They didn't always find the best way to show it, maybe. But still, are you with me? So I need to see truth, because I need to see the truth to find freedom. If I get stuck in other things, I will be a slave. I cannot afford to be a slave to sin. I cannot afford to be a slave of my weaknesses, my past, and the sins and the weaknesses of other people. But I cannot be offended every day with things that people do. I can be frustrated to the point of death, their death. Hello. Based on what I can experience, but that's my choice. That's my choice. I cannot afford to be a slave to sin. 
I cannot destroy my life. But it will happen if I harden my heart, allow the poison in my heart. I must become a slave to sin. There is no other way. Or I will forgive. I will work through the processes to forget by focusing on God and the light and what he is saying so that freedom is my portion. Freedom to live the quality life that God has for me. It can be. It can be there for me. Amen? Number four, so that they can be changed. What type of person are you becoming? You are changing every day. You will change more into his likeness or you will become more miserable and destroy more of you. Verouderung. I didn't get the right English for that. Decay or destruction. What is verouderung? Decay. Decay. Sweet. So uh, that's what will happen. Death will walk in, work in you in a destructive way. Or death will work in you as a po- in a positive way. Death will be your servant or death will be your master to destroy you. For me, life is Christ and death is gain. What is the death? The death of my flesh. The death of my issues. The death of all that chamorce that I lay down at the cross of Christ. The death of my disappointments. Yes, it's real. But I cannot afford for that. Those disappointments and hurts and things that I went through, I cannot afford for those things to destroy my life. They're not going to give me freedom if I focus on them. I first need an apology from you. You first need to acknowledge the things that you did wrong. Okay, you are the sucker, you are the fool who believes that your freedom depends on the reactions of others. And if they are starting to to treat you right, and if they are doing all the right things, then you can be free. Nobody said that. Where do you find that in the Word? (laughs) If you believe that, the devil can just laugh at you and organize another 20. So that you later will say, these Christians, you know. And the devil says, amen. (laughs) These Christians, you know. They're like this and this and this and this and this. So you have the stronghold. You're a slave. You stand as a slave. And whatever the master tells you to say, whatever the master tells you to believe, whatever the master tells you to, to feel, that is what you will feel. No. It starts with forgive, forget, take your freedom. You will not be a slave because of poison, because of you hardening in your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. So change will be there for the better, not for the better. Okay, Romans 8, verse 11. Can you please remember that one? 8, verse 11. And if the Spirit of Him, God, Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Your mortal bodies. That is looking more as if he is dying, 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 getting older and older and older. No, 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 no. Your spirit will just blossom more and more and more and more. The real you will not die more and more and more and more. The real you will just grow and glow and blossom and blossom and blossom even more. More and more from glory to glory. Glory means beauty. From heavenly beauty to more heavenly beauty to more heavenly beauty. That is from glory to glory. So your life can be. So your life must be. So God, that's the way God wants your life to be. Can we go for that? Change will happen. It will just happen. If you like it or not, it will happen. It's impossible for you to stay the same. But in the mortal body, if the mortal body is going through suffering or not through suffering, getting older, you cannot say I'm not getting older. You will get older. You are not uh, who you are based on what's happening in your body and in your circumstances. 
you can grow from glory to glory. Why? The spirit who raised Christ from the dead is living in you. He's living in you and he can strengthen your spirit. He can strengthen your spirit. Amen. He will take your spirit and make it strong. Take your spirit and make it strong. But the living word must be in there. You put the word in there as if it is, this is the living word, Jesus Christ, the living word. This is Christ, the living word. True? So if it's just the word, it's like the word in you is in the grave. You get it in. That is like you take the word in as putting it in a grave. Hello? Like Jesus, the Holy Spirit who came in the grave and rose him from the dead. Hello, my brother, my sister. You put the word in. Holy Spirit will come. And if you feel this word and you read it and it's just been put in a grave, Holy Spirit will come and it will take the word and will let it come forth. It will be raised as if raised from the dead in your life. But if you put other chachas and chamors and bitterness in your life and it's seed upon seed and things and things and you entertain the thoughts, that demonic spirit will come and it will raise that those thoughts as if from the dead and bring suddenly this destruction in you and you are suddenly shocked with what type of thoughts you get. What type of attitudes, what type of emotion, what type of things are coming up in you suddenly? Where does this come from? You allowing all these things to come in. As it is just a thought, there's no life in that thought, you know. But more and more you entertain the wrong words, the wrong thoughts. And suddenly there's enough for that spirit to come in and let that words become alive in you. So that your life can be destroyed. And you become a slave. Now you need to fight this thing the whole time and it doesn't work. No, God's going to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can read Romans 12 verse 2 also. You must write that there, please. Last one. Your ability. Your abol- ability. It was your vermoe. Ne? Your vermoe. Your ability. When you forgive, when you can forget the, all the process of that, you'll find the freedom. And in the freedom, you are able to change into more of him, less of you, more from heaven, less from that what is rubbish on earth. And that will give you a supernatural ability to live as a son of God. This major ability, ability not that the circumstances don't have this ability over you. Hello, focus. That this supernatural ability is over your life. We are able to do whatever we want with that man, the devil's, the spirit of the world. Ah, uh-uh. circumstances, the economy, whatever. We are able to do whatever we want with the Church of Christ in South Africa. <laughs> it could be. If we cannot understand how to forgive, forget, take our freedom and change day by day into more of him and his glory, then yes. But we have the ability. We have the ability in Christ Jesus. Acts 1 verse 8, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come over you and you will have the ability to. You will be my witnesses. You have the ability to be my witnesses. Therefore, God, keep you accountable. What type of witness are you? If you are filled with the Spirit and the God has put the Spirit over you and over your life, you have that ability and God has called you to be. You will be. <laughs> you know, somebody can say, um, my son, uh, eat your, what is he, bompies now here? Broccoli. What's it called? Broccoli. Waar is jou anders is hier? Nee, jylle is nie net twee nie, laas het ek toch gedog, jylle is drie. Sê by die huis. Ja, let's tell her the story. Broccoli. And now you can say, I want you to eat the broccoli. It will be good for you to eat your broccoli. And then there's something else. You will eat your broccoli. That's something else. Not true? You never experienced that from your parents, I know. But I experienced that. You will do this. 
Now, God said, when the Holy Spirit come over you, you will. There's no choice. So if the Spirit is on you, you will be my witnesses. Are you with me? So if you are not a witness, ask the Holy Spirit, God, why are you not so on my life? Why, are, why is your, your hand not so over my life that it's just this voice inside of me that says, you will. But if you entertain the bitterness and the hardened heart and the poison and the being enslaved, that spirit says you will have an attitude. If that person doesn't with you, you will. If that person asks you to do something again and he say it, he ask it in a bad way and he didn't even ask please and he didn't say thank you for the previous thing, you will react and you will not be faithful in what you have called me to do. You will not do it as if unto the Lord. You will react on your emotions. You will. Somebody's going to force you. God doesn't want to force you. He wants to, you to do it for your own good. The enemy for your destruction. God is excited for your growth. The enemy is excited for your destruction. You will. You know, there was a, a day that Javen, when he was very, very, very young, the three ladies, the three visas, they... <laughs> They chased him and oh, they make as if they cannot catch him, you know. And then he would chase the three girls around here and all over and he would chase them. So in Jaden's eyes, he was these three angels, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so at that stage, my wife would tell him, no, Jaden, Irene, all of them, they eat their broccoli. And Jaden eat his bombies. Eat his bombies. And so, Talia, <laughs> Anna Marie told my wife, no, she tried it also, but it back backfired. <laughs> what? <laughs> she said, <laughs> Anna Marie <laughs> put the, the broccoli there with Talia and said, Jaden will, Jaden eat also his broccoli. And Talia looked at the mother and said, now, go and give it to him then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out right. <laughs> ah, but that was just so, by the way. But <laughs> the whole thing, you will do it. Are you with me? So if you are not a witness, then something somewhere is wrong. But you are witnessing about something. You are witnessing about your opinion. You are witnessing about your flesh. You are witnessing based on your whatever. But you are a witness of something tonight as you sit here. You are a witness and there is a witness inside of you. But the witness, the testimony is through the Holy Spirit. Make sure you have that. Amen. Let no destruction work in you in the wrong way. No. Number five. No, he talked about that. You, you know, I, I must end at five. It's about ability. 1 John 4, 4. That's what? You have the power. So 1 John 4, 4 is? We said it this morning. 1 John 4, 4 says? Nobody. Don't make everybody, if you have some other muffling thing over your mouth. You what? You have overcome. Everybody say? You have overcome. But, but you, how, how do you know? Because he, he's the overcomer. You have overcome, for greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Victory is already inside of you. Victory is already inside of you. Because he has won. You have overcome. So in my spirit, victory is there. There's victory. So if I allow what is from God, when I take the words of victory in me and I just put it out there, what is happening out there is confirming that I have the words of victory. When it's changing there, it just confirms that victory is inside of you. Not that determines if I'm a failure or not. I am victorious because of the one living in me. I failed. One big failure. But then victory came and lived inside of me. And he 
his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. So when I depend on him and I go in the name of Christ and I love him and I walk with him and I choose to be dependent on him and get his word inside, when it is happening there, it's just confirming the victory I have, that I have already in my spirit. If there's no victory, you're supposed to live from your spirit, not as a, like a baboon from your soul with your emotions, your intellect and all the other stuff. Eh? Live from the place of victory that is in you. You have overcome. For greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You are with me. Philipp Philippians 4 verse 13. You are okay in all circumstances. If it's good, if it's bad. If you have a lot, if you don't have a lot. Because you have learned how to be content. Why? For verse 13. Philippians 4 verse 13. For I can do all things. Everybody say all things. Through Christ, hello, who strengthens me. Because Christ is strengthening me. So I, do I allow his strength? Because if I allow his strength, I can do. Now next time you think, I always, or oh, that guy, he always does this. In marriage, it sometimes happens. Just once in 10 years, she said, you are always doing this. I remember in this past 10 years, there was one incident. Yes. You always do this. <laughs> Hello? Next time you get that voice of always, then you remember, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everything is not bad. Sometimes we can feel everything is bad. I feel depressed. Everything is bad. Negative. Everything is negative. Everything is a frustration. Everything is... Anybody experience that? Everything is frustration. And when you feel frustrated, then whatever is happening around you makes you more frustrated. Everything frustrates you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Or you decide, Christ will not strengthen me. I will not allow his strength. Okay. But that's not what you say like it in this way. I will not allow Christ to strengthen, to strengthen me. No. But your actions, in your actions, you make the decision. I will not allow the strength of Christ. So I can become fed up, fed up, fed up, fed up. And then with my strength, I say, Something I suppose not to say. God's going to help us. Amen. I will have the ability or I will lose everything. You can write the ability. You will go with the ability. Like sons of God. You just have this ability to succeed. You just have this ability to overcome. You just have this ability. You just have it. For Romans 8 verse 31. What shall we say now? After all your moaning or after all your groaning, not, not you guys, but people, maybe other people. After this, and oh, what shall we say? What shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who gave even his son to die for us on the cross and give everything, how shall he not with him give us all that we need? That's Romans 8 verse 32. Please, please go with that ability that you have. But how foolish can we be if we have everything and we lose everything? But at the end of the day, actually, we have everything and we believe the enemy that we have nothing. Because it's not like Christ is going to leave your life. He will never leave you, never forsake you, even though you mess up. I'm not talking about turn your back on him and serve the devil. I'm talking about when there's weaknesses and you are struggling with things in your life. He will not leave you. He will never forsake you. He's faithful. He cannot be unfaithful. He cannot be unfaithful to his word. And his word was, I will never leave you, never forsake you. So you will be faithful to his word. Amen. That's why he will be there. 
that you can cause destruction in your own life and forever in heaven knows that, oh man, life could have been so much better on earth. God had a nice dream for me on earth. Why? I could have. But there's no condemnation in heaven. But it's just, Nuck. no. One day in heaven, you're not going to say, Nuck. nah. Hello? You're not going to say, Nuck. okay? But we're going to say, thank you, Father, for the opportunity. And when we fell through your blood, we had an opportunity again. You can lose everything, like the guy with the one talent. Enough with that. Remember the one guy with the one talent? He was right, and his leader, master, was wrong. Guy with one talent, he didn't work with it as he went to the law. Doesn't matter your boss, doesn't matter what is happening, nothing can justify unfaithfulness. And you're only faithful when what you have double. Not when what that you keep what's being given to you. That makes you a lazy, unfaithful servant. Because he didn't steal, the guy with the one talent. Everything that was given to him, he gave back to the master. You lazy, unfaithful servant. Take everything and give it to the other guy that has already ten. That's unfair. When you grow in Christ, when you are faithful, it will just multiply, multiply. I'm not first talking about clickety-click financial prosperity teaching. No, 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 no. I'm talking about faithful in what God has given you to do. Amen? But the guy with one talent, yes. You're a hot master and you reap where you haven't sown. He says not to the master. So, uh, so he hears it back, but I'm not involved with this thing. Master says, you are right. Who's right? The master says, you are right, Mr. Servant with the one talent. I am a hard master and I reap where I haven't sown. Based on wrong, right and wrong, die and go to hell. Because that's the only right that you have. It's not right for Jesus to die on the cross. But it was the will of God. It wasn't right in the sense of he did nothing wrong. So he's not supposed to be on the cross. But it was the righteousness of God. It was right in the eyes of God based on his love and his grace for me and you. It was right in the Father's eyes to say, my son will suffer and take the consequences for what they have done wrong. And therefore my right is in Christ Jesus before my Father. He, Jesus, is my righteousness. He is my right to appear before the throne of God before the throne of grace, only in Christ I can be there, in that place. So today, tonight, see yourself, you are only, you can only be found in grace. And when you think about others, you put them in God's grace. They say, I will put them in God's grace. As I need my Father's grace. Amen. So let it flow, let it flow. So we say, in Jesus' name, let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you open it up for us, the whole richness of forgiveness. Thank you that you forgive us, that we can forgive ourselves, Lord, because we know how to forgive others also. Please forgive us as we, even tonight, Holy Spirit, as you show some of us that right, right now, that they will forgive certain people. There's people that they need to forgive right now. Show them, Holy Spirit, and help them right now in their hearts to say, I forgive you. I forgive you. Thank you, Father, that you are setting us free right now. So that pour out your forgiveness to every man and woman tonight who forgive those who wronged them, who take their forgiveness tonight for themselves, that says, tonight I forgive myself as Father God forgives me, as my Father forgives me tonight. Yes, Lord, I forgive myself. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, let your hand be over every man, every woman here, that 
they will not harden their hearts. Holy Spirit, when you speak, because you want to speak to us so many times. God, help us to forget yesterday through the blood of Christ. Help us to see how you bring your thoughts in our hearts, in our minds, Lord, so that we can forgive and forget. Help us to run into the light so that it goes strangely dim, all the rubbish, in the light of your glory and grace as we turn our eyes upon you, Lord, and look full in your wonderful face. Poison will not work in us with a hardened heart. Help us with that, Lord. We take our freedom in the name of Jesus Christ, and we will not be slave to sin, slave to our opinion, slave to the to whatever circumstances want to throw at us in Jesus' name. God, we will change from glory to glory, beauty into more of you. That's our decision, Lord, based on your grace. Help us, Lord, that death will not destroy us, but death will work for us. It will be the death of our flesh, Lord. We choose that. We will not try to keep our flesh alive to destroy us. No, in Jesus' name. That's our decision all here together in Jesus' name. God, but we will have the ability. We will have the ability to be your witnesses as you, Holy Spirit, come upon us. We will be your witnesses. Here we are. Make us witnesses, not of our rebellion or our issues or our depression or our whatever, Lord. We will not be witnesses of what happened or what people are doing against us. No, we will be witnesses of your awesomeness, your faithfulness, and how you are so always there for us, Lord. We will, because we have the ability. That what you've given us will not be lost, Lord. We will not have a life in vain. Our life will not be in vain. Your grace to us will not be in vain. But we respect your grace, Lord, and we can be based on your grace. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name, and in that name alone, and all say, Amen, Amen.